The scope of the Sakhalin Phase 2 project involves the installation of approximately 1,600 kilometres of onshore pipeline. These pipelines, an oil export pipeline and a gas export pipeline, cross about 1,084 um, rivers or water courses. Now, many of these uh, rivers are su substantial rivers, many of them are, are small ditches, but nevertheless, each and every one of those 1,084 water courses have to be crossed in some way by these, by these pipelines. Now, of course, within these um, water courses, these 1,084 water courses, there are many significant rivers, significant in that they either contain uh, volumes of, of fish, which are uh, of great significance to the island of Sackland from a commercial perspective, and some of these rivers contain salmon and fish, which are data book species, red data book species fish, i.e. endangered. So for that reason, in crossing these rivers, we have to take extra special care to ensure that we don't compromise or jeopardize in any way the salmon spawning habitats or indeed uh, have an impact on any of the commercial fishery interests which are, which are on the island. Laying 1,600 kilometers of pipeline on this beautiful island is, is, is quite an undertaking. It's one of the greatest pipeline undertakings in the world, I would suggest because A, we have so many, many stakeholder interests we have to take care of, we have a pristine environment, and we have these very, very sensitive rivers. So sensitive, in fact, that many of these rivers can only be crossed in the winter time. And we elect to cross them in the winter time, A, because it's not a spawning period, B, because the, many of the rivers are frozen, and C, because the flow rates within the rivers are at their lowest. The vast majority of our critical winter river crossings will be executed using the wet cut technique following international best practices. These practices are very much focused on minimizing the amount of sediment which is released into the river during the execution of the crossing itself. Um, and the details of this procedure are explained on our website. Once the pipe has been installed and the riverbed has been reinstated, we follow up by uh, restoring the banks of the river to give us a uh, uh, basically a river bank that looks as good if not better than it did before we started the operation. A minority of these crossings, about six in actual fact, are crossed using horizontal directional drilling. Rather than cut through the, the water course itself, we elect to drill underneath the river using directional drilling techniques to put the pipelines underneath the riverbed and thereby have zero impact on the river whatsoever. Now, in addition to the good restoration work that we're doing on all of these crossings, Sackland Energy has actually committed to pursuing two other uh, sustainable development projects related to um, salmon on Sackland Island. The first is that we're launching an international study uh, using uh, Russian scientists as well as other international scientists to study in great detail the Sackland Taiman, one of the red data book species that uh, live within uh, salmon rivers. And the other initiative which we're launching is to look at um, all of the rivers uh, within our sphere of operations and to try and restore some of the habitats. And what we're going to try and do here is to restore those riverbeds to create greater salmon breeding habitat for the many millions of salmon that return to Sackland every year. We have independent environmental monitors. Those independent environmental monitors record, uh, inspect, review everything that we're doing in the field. And the independent reports produced by those monitors are published on our website for everyone to see. We do acknowledge and, and regret that in a very few, and I must stress a few instances, um, some of our uh, spreads have not performed totally in line with our expectations. We've drawn enormous learning from this initial experience. We've put in place uh, measures to ensure that the learning and indeed the best practices which we have on other parts of the spread are being shared amongst all of our contractors so that indeed we can raise the level of performance to the level that we aspire to on each and every spread. And I'm very confident and very happy that with this process in place we will see overall uh, a continuous journey of improvement in, in, in attaining strict, strict compliance with our objectives.